Hey everyone, Shark here with a 1v1 for you today on Fame and Ville Approach between two German challenger level players. I like this match because it shows the advantages of high early pressure and also how to combine battle group abilities to have devastating effects on your enemy. Playing as the Axis, we got Alpenwell, who's ranked number 25 with the DAC using the Italian Combined Arms Battle Group. And playing as the Allies, we have Panzer Grenadier Angriefer, who's ranked number 50 with the Americans using the Armored Battle Group. And that's it for the intro. I hope you enjoy. On to the match. All right, everyone. So what we got today, Alpenwell playing as the DAC, starting on the north side of the map here. Well, it's the east side, but top of the screen in the default view. And then at the bottom of the screen, we got Panzer Grenadier Angriefer. Uh, both these guys, Enemy German players. And so we have uh, Panzer Grenadier going for a scout and a barracks. And then Alpenwell getting Bersalieri out, as well as a crowd shoots in. So he will have a lot of capping power early. Rifles coming out for Panzer Grenadier. I'm always interested to see the capping order of some of these high-level players. And both these guys are top 50. And so I wonder how they... I want to kind of watch and figure out how they prioritize resources. This I've seen is relatively standard where you have someone come out and get the cutoff, go straight for the fuel. It looks like a Panzer Grenadier has done the same thing, but these scouts, they cap the fuel and then they're at risk of being put into uh, under some pressure here by the crowd shits and, and the Panzer Pioneers. Panzer Pioneer is immediately going to counter cap the fuel here. So for a 1v1 map, this is a relatively high fuel map. You see these four uh, medium fuel points. Right, so if you have two of them generally, that's a pretty uh, pretty consistent income for attacking. Now we see the jeep coming out. And Panzer Grenadier going for the armored battle group. And that's a good counter to the crowd shoots in. Alpenwell's getting a second crowd shoots in. And so... I think they're going to try to kind of run down this jeep here. The one is going to be forced to back up. It has to kind of stay in the rear. This is one thing. In this game, target prioritization is up to the unit itself. It doesn't remember your priority commands if you give it any other commands. And so units in Company of Heroes 3 prioritize the closest uh, threat. And so that can cause some wonky behavior where this jeep... Oh, at risk of going down here but to the bursas. One more good shot. Oh, and there it is. That's a good pickup for Alphamol here. Second bursa squad out. And these two crotches need to be able to cap up the map really, really quickly. Meanwhile, Panzer Grenadier only has two rifle squads out with the scouts. Uh, and so I think he needs to play a little bit more passive for a minute. So we can start to build up some of his combat power. Rifle is going to drop into heavy cover here, but still probably not going to win this engagement against the Bersalieri. I think bursts and rifles are, are pretty similar early game in terms of performance um, before they get the upgrades. And so a 2 on one is exactly what you're looking for. But to his credit, Panzer Grenadier has done a good job of maintaining uh, really essentially both of his fuels. So even though you've got Alphamwell already getting his like... Uh, his light mechanized company out, or light support company out. Good, reasonably good fuel control. Although, now that I say that, crotch is in counter capping fuel here in the south. Now, rifles gonna pinch these Bersalieri. In here, their cover doesn't matter, but three rifle squads should do fairly well against. Yep, and the Bursas forced to retreat. Panzer Pioneers, actually, I don't think they really want to close with these rifles because they're going to end up having to retreat as well. And Panzer Grenadier using his scouts to counter cap the opposite fuel. So smart. Now, MG34 on the way out for Alpenwell. Makes sense. Panzer Grenadier getting a med tent up. Uh, really important to prevent, you know, losing a lot of man, bleeding a lot of manpower to some of these engagements. And I, I think the MG34 is a good call here, especially if, if I know Alpenwell, he's going to want to play with some 8 rods. So I think the MG34... Oh no, he's going for fire support elements, so maybe he'll get the flak for laying out. But the MG34 will help him control 
these rifles. And he knows that Panzer Grenadier has gone armored. Right? There's no surprises for either one of these commanders. MG34. Called early grenade tech. Two models go down. But now both rifle squads are suppressed, and with versus closing, they'll be forced to retreat. Yeah, this double crotch hits I really like this uh, for my own DAC play in the future. Just because it you have so much capping power, so much speed and mobility across the map. We'll see how well they scale into the late game. Heads are going to the air going for an infantry support center, and then the ve the recovery vehicle. Infantry have ranged us! Interesting that he went for vehicle support instead of the bursillary bolster. Black filling on the way out for Alpenwall. Panzer Grenadier basically sitting, he has to sit back behind uh, this ISC tech before he can get a motor pool. So Alpenwall's got a window uh, with a little bit of time to do some damage before Greyhounds and Chappies come out. His crowd shoots and doing a great job of capping up, and that fuel advantage is going to translate really well into the mid-game. We can't take losses like this! The mounted flag truck has arrived! Our victory point is being neutralized! But Oppenwell going for the general upgrades to infantry rather than the Bersillary specific ones. That tells me he doesn't plan on playing uh, with more than these two squads here. And I, I know Alphamwell really likes the mechanized approach, so I think this is probably it for his infantry. Maybe some Panzer Jaegers in the future. Rifles attempting to counter cap. But this, uh, this flak for Link is going to do a lot of damage here. And they're able to decap the fuel there, but force off immediately. And then this squad here had a little bit of risk. Still full health, so they'll be able to retreat. They lose a lot of health, but they don't lose any models, so they'll be okay and uh, because of the med tent. I'm really impressed with Panzer Grenadier's ability to uh, counter cap, right, and maintain pressure despite the mobility advantage that Oppenwell has. And actually, the Captain's LMG doing good damage to the Krodschitzen. Now we see swarm of vehicles and the flak coming Panzer back out. Things are going to deer floating quite a bit of manpower. Uh, he's just waiting for his fuel to catch up. Alright, here comes the, the Panzer Jaeger assault group. The mobile hit squad. Another rifle squad coming out. I think this makes sense. You're still waiting for the motor pool, and then you're not going to want to build light buildings or light vehicles until you get the war machine out and the, the discounted cost. Yeah, and this is tough. Panzer Grenadier is not going to be able to take many of these engagements with the flak filling rolling around. Frontal armor on the half track preventing the stock, the Garands on the Rifleman from really doing too much damage. Comes the flak filling with the Bersalieri. And he is doing a good job keeping this flak filling at range, knowing that uh, Panzer Grenadier has tech grenades already. Alright, here comes the motor pool. I expect to see an AT gun almost immediately. At this point, the lack of fuel income is really hurting him. And the Alpenwell has already got his tier 4 being constructed now. So, Panzer Grenadier, he needs a couple of clean trades here to start to make up for the lack of resources. But, you got this double crotch, it's in one on relatively low health, supported by the flak filling. So, rifles really, and they can't even connect this munitions point, or haven't connected it yet because of this manpower uh, point here. Oh. 
scouts retreat. Not sure why they didn't finish capping this fuel point. Oh, the MG-34 in the building. Now uh, has pinned this rifle squad. And Crotch is in her here to recap the fuel, uh, the heavy fuel. First AT gun out for Panzer Grenadier and a second one on the way. Yeah. He needs these AT guns to make an immediate impact. First AT gun coming up. He's using his infantry to keep an eye on the flak filling. I think he's trying to attack ground in the flak filling. First shot misses. And so does the second. Chris area here in the center, challenging the rifle squad. Of course, Karad Schutzen capping up the, the flank. So this is, I think this is smart play from Panzer Grenadier, right? He's on the back foot here, but what he's doing is essentially keeping his forces combined into the middle and trying to keep his like reinforcement lines as short as possible and also keep his infantry around the AT gun so whenever this flak filling moves up to engage, he'll immediately take a shot. Good use of the flare to uh, reveal the Panzer Jaegers. There we go. First shot hits the flak for lane. Rifle squad closing with the crowd shoots in on the flank. And now counter capping his fuel. So he's making really good use of his four rifle squads. And now he has War Machine out uh, unlocked. So these light vehicles will end up being much cheaper. Meanwhile, though, Alpenwell getting a Panzer III out. Oh. Rifle squad retreats in time. Oh. Can they get one more shot off? I don't think he has visibility. There we go. There's the snare. Oh, but the crowd shoots and gets away. And over here, two squads of bursas getting pushed back. Uh, the rifle squad sitting on the cutoff. Good use of the Greyhound. Alpenwell really lacks hard AT at this point. He's got the Panzer Jaegers, but just one squad of them. And the scout flare basically able to spot them. And Bursas obviously have no real uh, ability to deal with this Greyhound, but the Panzer III has just hit the field. I mean, if I'm Panzer Grenadier at this point, I'm probably getting a third AT gun just so I can spread them out to help deal with all these light vehicles. Really, you need two AT gun hits to kill pretty much anything on the field, more for the P3. Ooh. First shot knocks out a couple of riflemen. Now here come here comes a P3, but a couple AT guns to support. Black filling takes one hit. P3 is gonna roll past the AT gun here. That in itself is risky. It's gonna get snared. Here's the Greyhound. This second AT gun, man, if it had been able to stay on the flank. P3 are going to take another couple of hits. Panzer Pioneer is up to support, but they're taking a lot of damage. They almost go down. Oh, P3 bounces an AT gun shot, and that'll allow it to back up. So, good engagement for Panzer Grenadier there. Uh, no kills, but he's able to force some things off and now he's got uh both of his medium fuels back both crotch shoots and still alive though and harassing it looks like alpenwell's got them grouped up together probably for you know ease of control um but a little bit of wasted capping power with both of them first engineer coming out on the field for panzer grenadier which he'll need to repair this greyhound and another rifle squad so I think it looks like that's going to be his answer, is just maintaining a lot of capping pressure with the infantry. Alright. Versailleri on their way out. 
E3 almost fully healed. Second one on the way. Black filling. And I really like this, using the reverse to back it up so it can engage immediately. Versillary moving forward to spot for the P3. He just basically wants to find those AT guns before he engages. And the P3's on prioritized vehicles. There he goes. And he drops. I wonder if he's looking for the Greyhound. Captain forced to evacuate before the building gets dropped. Yeah, and it looks like Alpha is just going to knock down this building to keep it from being used against him in the future. Here comes the flag filling. The second P3 hits the field. Black filling eats one shot, and then it'll back up. Back up. And you'll notice here in the mini map, uh, Alpha Will's forgotten to put a rally point for his tier four. So his second P3 is just sitting in the base, not being used, at least at the moment. Now a mortar on the way out for Panzer Grenadier. Interested with the thought process is there. You know, Panzer Grenadier doesn't have that many, or excuse me, Alpha doesn't have that many team weapons. He just has the one MP34. Yeah, this is good. I really like to see this. The AT guns in different lanes to provide better angles. Oh, man, really lucky that that shot bounced on that P3. Uh, otherwise, that would have been knocked out. Good AT gun play by Panzer Grenadier. And so he's starting to claw this one back in terms of control. The rifle is doing a lot of work, but the double crowd shoots in, allowing Alpha Mobile to maintain pressure as well. Here comes the flak for Ling. AT gun just barely out of position to attack. Now Greyhound lined up on the crash hits in. Oh, flak for Ling suppresses the rifle squad just in time to prevent the snare getting uh, onto the, the crash hits in. Ooh, flak for Ling goes down to a second AT gun shot. It's a really nice positioning there. And now, with only the MG34 for suppression, these five rifle squads, now with the ARs, are going to be able to maintain a lot of pressure. MG34 goes down as well. Now, double AT gun. The P3's just trying to outmaneuver. And looks like, yep, one AT gun cleared. The other one taking a shot through the hedge. And Alpenwell willing to potentially sacrifice this P3 to knock out that AT gun. Oh man, this one's got to try to fire through the sight blocker using attack ground, which is going to cause some weird issues with collisions on that wall. The so one P3 pretty damaged. Oh, now here's the Chaffee. Chaffee and a Greyhound with an AT gun in support. Oh, P3 bounces the first couple rounds. Now with the second in support. Chaffee very damaged. One P3 knocked out. Chaffee traded. He's got to be careful that these Panzer Jaegers don't knock out this Greyhound. AT gun moving up to see if they can take some shots at this uh, remaining P3. Another one on the way here for Alpha Mall. Here we go. Greyhound spots. Panzer Jaegers take damage during repairs. Another shot. Greyhound does a good job maintaining sight, but that P3 will get away. In the meantime, though, look at this map control. The rifles, the engineer, the scouts. And the Versailles area are going to come out of the base with MG34 to try to counter. Second P3 hits the field here. Another AT gun on the way out from Panzer Grenadier, and he's unlocked the EZ-8 now. Yeah. Alpenwell definitely starting to feel the lack of suppression. Captain Mortar Barrage comes in. Crodschitz is now going to counter cap. No tank depot yet for Panzer Grenadier. He did the EZ-8 production which allow him to benefit from the manpower cost reduction from War Machine, but he still needs to build his tier four, and he is two minutes away in terms of fuel based on current income. Oh, 
B3 is moving up. They are very fast. This Greyhound is done. And they make a great screening force for the rest of this uh, DAC element. The crotch is in the cap. And it. He's checking. He's upgraded the survival package and the emergency repair kits. So that's 120 extra health on all of his vehicles and the auto repair, which will allow him to keep them on the field longer. Here's a triple vet AT gun. And Pensagrated here really needs to try to keep this thing alive. Uh, here comes the artillery cover. Oh, that AT gun is in trouble. Maybe if it can get one, nope. I say if it could get one more shot off. And they are, oh, another AT gun rolls up and knocks out another P3. So good pickup for Panzergren here. Here's another AT gun. Lots of artillery coming in. It gets cleared again. But that P3 force to back up and knocks out the, uh, destroys the AT gun that can drop. Captain pushing up in the center and pushed off by the MG34. Up and well with the second MG34 on the field now. This mortar team in the middle about to get run over by the Bersalieri. Panzer Grenadier doing a really nice job of maintaining capping pressure and getting good trades and engagements despite the fact that Alphamwell should have much more capping power. Tank Depot under construction for Panzer Grenadier. MG34 in the back is going to prevent these rifles from advancing too aggressively. Another P3 on the way out. Captain Mortarbrush coming in to deal with MG34. Second AT gun out to challenge the P3 here. MG34 backs up and is able to suppress the rifles in the center. Oh, Mortar doing a lot of work to this MG34 on the munitions point. Next round should... Oh, bad RNG on that engagement. AT gun backs up into the base and gets decrewed. Oh, artillery cover right here in the headquarters sector. Uh, and that's going to be pretty tilting. Oh, it doesn't look like it's dropping shells within the base sector. MG-34 picked up by rifles. P-3s might be able to clear it before it retreats. The other MG-34 got knocked out as well. Appenwell building yet another. He really needs the suppression to deal with the Salad Infantry. I almost think uh, rebuilding the flak Lane might be worthwhile as well. Now, Pensor Grenadier doesn't have any air-based abilities, but that would normally uh, the flag, be another reason for a late-game flak furling is its ability to help control those planes and loiters. The Panzer Grenadier are a little bit behind in VPs, but has the current advantage. Um, he's behind in KD, but the vehicles that he's lost compared to the, the two P3s in the flak furling, I think make up for that difference. Differential. So here come a couple of MG34s to challenge this American infantry. Meanwhile, P3 is going to push on this fuel point here. And I think Applewell's smart to really focus on trying to maintain this fuel point. These P3s are really good against medium vehicles and infantry. But they do less well against the late game armor, and the EZ-8 is absolutely a threat, especially when they're massed.
And I can continue to be impressed by Panzer Grenadier's ability to keep up capping pressure, uh, despite all, you know, the double crowd shits and build by Alpenwall. That tells you he's a very seasoned, experienced 1v1 player, his ability to manage that. Here comes the MG34, using the Panzer Jaeger to spot for it, that's smart. Third P3 on the way out now, and I think Alphamol's decided he just wants to mass his P3 train with some upgrades so they can start to, to really turn engagements here. American riflemen starting to do much better against the uh, Bersalari infantry. And then Mortar knocking out the MG34. So now, the brand new P3 coming in. Artillery cover called, and in a really good spot to do a lot of damage to the AT guns. Hellcat on the field for Panzer Grenadier. Oh, but combined with the artillery cover, if it doesn't move, that Hellcat's gonna get knocked out immediately. AT gun cleared, rifle squad goes down. Wow. And it looks like that's it. All right, everyone. Yeah, the ending of that caught me by surprise a little bit. Um, but we're going to go through the build order here like we normally do. Just starting with Alpenwell. Uh, he locks in Italian Combined Arms Battle Group right away for the Bersalieri. He starts, he gets a squad of Bersalieri out, and then two crowd shoots him for his second infantry squad. And then he texts up into Light Support Company. So I, I know Alpenwell a little bit. I've talked to him about his, his game style, and I know that he likes to play very mechanized heavy with the DAX. This is pretty consistent for him. And then he sees the rifle heavy opening from Panzer Grenadier, so he gets the MG40, uh, MG34 out, Texas fire support elements, gets the flak filling, which is really good for crowd control, especially against the Americans. And then he starts, as he's developing this manpower advantage, he starts to develop out the DAC armory. So vehicle survival package, um, calls in a Panzer Jaeger with the half track. I think concerned about the Greyhound and the American light vehicle play. And then he goes for his tier four and he texts into the emergency repair kits. And on top of being able to repair all your units, uh, it adds another 80 health to the vehicle. So super helpful there. Uh, starts building Panzer threes. He eventually builds five of them. He spends the rest of the time. He gets another MG 34 out and then he gets some additional upgrades uh, for his units, the tungsten core ammunition and the advanced field repairs uh, before the game ends there. So lots of armory upgrades, lots of vehicles, not a lot of infantry play, which we'll, we'll talk about here in a minute. And then on the American side, Panzer Grenadier Angriefer, uh, which I think just translates to Panzer Grenadier attacks, um, but my German's a little rusty. Uh, he, he locks in the armor battle group right away. So he gets his scowl out, he builds his barracks, a rifle squad, and then a Jeep with the, uh, the Vet 1 uh, battle group upgrade so it can cap. Unfortunately, the Jeep goes down relatively early, and so he's forced to play uh, really rifle heavy. Uh, ends up with three rifle squads out. Text grenades, which is always smart against the DAC to give you flexibility against their light vehicles. Gets a medic tent so that he avoids bleeding some manpower. And then he goes ISC. So it's worth noting his ISC comes out pretty late, and then his motor pool comes out even later. And I think this allows Alpenwell to kind of snowball some of that map control. Um, from there, he gets a fourth rifle squad, gets a couple of AT guns. Uh, it was actually floating some manpower here, um, and, and we'll talk about it that a little bit. Uh, then he gets a Greyhound, an engineer to, to facilitate repairs, a fifth rifle, uh, a mortar, which it was an interesting choice, but I think proved helpful against the MG34s. He upgrades the BARs on his rifles, and then he gets a Chaffee out, and the Chaffee doesn't last very long. It knocks out one P3, but then it is pretty much immediately traded. He gets two more AT guns out, and then he finally, towards the end of the game, he builds his tank depot because he went for the easy eight production rather than call in, uh, which is smart because he had the, the war machine piece um, to, to reduce the cost. But that means he has to wait until he can actually build the tank depot first. So at the end of the game, he ends up getting a, a Hellcat out uh, before he finally gets knocked out and throws in the towel. So I'll actually, I'll start with, with Panzer Grenadier here. I, I like his approach, right? It's pretty basic when he realizes that he's being spread out by Alpenwell. He really digs into the rifle squad um, because especially the way Alpenwell built out the Bersalieri, right? Not, not doing the Bersalieri specific upgrades in the battle group, instead doing the generic 
um, the better capture rate near vehicles, the better sight near vehicles for all of the DAC infantry. The Bersaleri actually don't scale very well against the riflemen. And so having eventually five rifle squads on the field allows him to kind of counter the pressure that Alpenwell is building with his two crowd shits in. So um, that makes sense. The early grenade tech, the early medic tent, that all makes sense. Uh, what really hurt him, though, was the loss of that Jeep translated into a loss of map and fuel control that meant that his motor pool came out really late. One thing that I appreciate that he did, though, he floated a little bit of manpower, and this can be a double-edged sword, but I see in the past sometimes um, guys will just build stuff because they have the resources and they're not sure why they're building it and they end up spamming a unit. Uh, I think in this case, he knew what he had on the field was kind of acceptable and what he, he needed to wait, in this case, really for fuel. And so he was holding on to that manpower. Now, it's it's not a bank. It's not earning you interest. You're not getting additional manpower from it. Um, in this case, uh, there was one point I think I said in the cast, like, man, he has two AT guns, but he's been on the back foot for fuel for so long. I think he should probably get three. And it's not three, so you can keep them in, like, one pod and wall and, like, walk up and get a sal single salvo. But you spread them out and so you keep uh you prevent yourself from being overrun by these like panzer three trains or eight rods where they can come at you from the side and surround you know a single nest of at guns if you keep them in lanes with infantry support now you're really deleting the ability of your opponent to move around easily with light vehicles because anywhere he tries to push he eats a shot or two early and then he's got to back up or risk losing losing the vehicle so uh, that would be Really, the only thing when I look at his approach and kind of how the start of the match went, that's the only real uh, thing that I would have changed. I actually was really impressed with his ability to maintain uh, his own pressure and counter cap, despite the fact that Alpenwell had really, really great map presence for most of the game. The other big, uh, really the other big takeaway is just the inability of the Bersaleri to scale against rifles if you don't invest into the upgrades for them. Right, and and that's kind of what happened. Alpenwell really focused on uh, mechanized vehicle play, and so his bursas, uh, they just didn't. By the end of the game, they were there to kind of fill in the gap and provide support and like pick up the machine guns when they've been decrewed, but they weren't going to go toe to toe with rifles, especially not late game uh, with the BARs. The last piece, it I think the the nail in the coffin for Panzer Grenadier was really when the Chaffee went down. He knocks out that P three, keeps the Chaffee alive. Now you've got a mobile AT element in addition to your AT guns, and that Chaffee is great pairing with the AT guns because now the P3 just tries to drive circles around the AT gun itself. The Chaffee can counter, get rear shots, get get penetration. But overall, I think I think he played well. Uh, I think it was just a rough start, and when you're at this level, um, it can be really hard to kind of claw your way back. And then for Alpenwell, you know I. I don't have, uh, I thought his play was, is really solid, right? The, the mechanized approach, if you can keep two Crodshitson alive uh, for as long as he did, and I think they were there for most of the game, um, that capping power is just insane. But you could see, uh, and this is not a criticism in, in any way, you could see the micro tax at the end of the game when he had the Crodshitson like grouped up together and they were capping points as a team. Um, yeah, it provides you a little bit of protection against like that rifle squad with BARs it's pushing because the BARs penetration will smoke a crowd shits in. But as opposed to the early game where there are fewer units on the field and he's microing each crowd shits in by itself and capping across the map. That is an interesting strategy though, the double crowd opening uh, that on some of these wider 1v1 maps I'm absolutely going to try uh, because as long as you can keep it alive, I think it, it really works for you. I don't recommend it against the Brits because uh, the dingoes just are too hardy right now. Um, hopefully that gets adjusted just a little bit uh, in, in a future upgrade or update. Um, I think it's smart to focus on suppression. Uh, instead of investing in like high-end infantry in the late game, he just kept building MG34s and he had the flak filling because that allows him to kind of manage the, the flood of rifle squads across the map. Um, and then going for the, the upgraded P3s, yeah, Eventually, if the game had gone on too long, the uh, the armored player with easy aids might have been able to start overpowering those P3s. But then as a deck, you have late game options. You've got the Tiger, you've got the 88. <clears throat> and he had enough of a resource advantage that I don't think it was an issue. Um, so kind of good thought process there. And then obviously, the what Alpenwell did best was leveraging the artillery cover from that battle group. Um, 
And when you're when you're down on fuel and you have to use manpower based weapons, so team weapons like AT guns and mortars to try to counter your opponent, you can be really susceptible to stuff like the artillery cover uh, ability. And that's exactly what happened. So Alpenwell had enough munitions. He ended up using it three times. And the third time, right on Panzer Grenadier's doorstep as he's trying to kind of build a defense really to come back. Panzer Grenadier needs like super clean trazies to knock out a couple of P3s without really losing anything. And that artillery cover comes in, smashes a couple AT guns that can't move out of the way fast enough, ends up leading to a Hellcat fighting on its own against two P3s. It goes down and you understand uh, why he threw in the towel at that point. So that's all for this one. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, if you've got any other thoughts, please throw them in the comments below. And uh, we'll see you all in the next one.